In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to stop the Gun Bunch meta offense in Madden 21. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about helping people become the best Madden players they could possibly become. And so if you're looking to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you to click the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen. It's completely free to subscribe to the channel and it just allows you to be able to stay up to date with the latest tips and strategies going on right here on my YouTube channel. Now, really quickly, our coaching adjustments that we're going to want to have set here, we're going to have our auto flip set to on. Uh, actually, we're going to set it to off um, specifically for Gun Bunch, but let's we'll set it for on. It's not a big deal. You're just going to flip um, flip the play if they flip the bunch. Ball and air defense is set to play ball. Option defense is on conservative. Zone drops. Flats are going to be on 30. Curl flats are going to be on 10. And hook curls are going to be on 10. This is going to take away a lot of the powerful uh, passing concepts that people like to go to. Now, our audibles are going to be the cover four show two and the mic blitz three. Those are the ones we're going to sub into the three three five wide. And we're going to come out in the three three five with safeties at linebacker. Now, if you want to get my complete three three five wide defensive guide, you can get that in the description for just 10 bucks. Um, it's the best defense in the entire game, and it's really, really simple to run it. Okay, so let's talk about adjustments. So what we did was we audible to mic blitz three. We shaded our coverage down, and then what we did is we put both of our linebackers on seam flats and we put our um, our nose tap or our defensive end on the outside into a uh, three rack. Now real quick, I wanna talk about this specific bomb. If you notice here, um, with this defense in particular, it's a very specific adjustment out of the uh, gun bunch. And this is also very true of a, a mutt team. So if you have a mutt team, this is gonna to apply to this as well. So this is the defensive setup that we want to start the game with. Um, and basically at the snap of the ball, what we're gonna do is we're just going to essentially wanna be over in this area. And if the running back goes out to like an option route or a vertical route or like a wheel route, that's our primary guy. But if you watch this cover three beater, this is the Jets dig play. It's a very popular cover three beater. Basically this R1 route will normally beat cover three over the top. What you're gonna see here is if they throw this, as you can see, it does beat it. What I want to tell you is that in mud, if you're running with a, a, a mud team, you're going to have a lot more success at beating this than not. So normally, it's not going to get burned in mud because you have better awareness, better zone coverage. Now, that's not to say that it can't get burned in mud. Okay, I want to be really clear. It certainly can get burned in mud. And so how we're going to deal with that is um, we're just simply going to take this... Um, we're, we're simply going to take this corner right here, and you, I like to go ahead and just simply put him on a deep half, okay? That simple adjustment right there. So we basically are deep halving to the wide side, and then we have that inside third to the left side. So if we run that same route combination again, now you're gonna see that this is basically completely taken away. The fade's not open, and the only thing open is this dig route, which we can work with uh, with our user. We can easily um, do some stuff to stop that. Now, one other thing I want to hit on just real briefly, um, this is a, another adjustment that people will do or that I would like to do uh, against this against this offense. So if I could take the left side corner and put him in a deep half, the question is, does it protect, does it protect the, um, the deep safety on this play? So you should see here that it's not going to, okay? So what this tells us about coverages is that coverages are broken into two parts or broken in half basically um, and so what I actually like to do there's there's really two coverages that you could do but one of the other coverages that I, we haven't talked about yet on the channel is this idea of like a cover three cloud and what I'm talking about is where we basically are going to roll um, essentially we're going to roll the coverage to the right and the way that we're going to do this is we've got our three rec right um, but we've also got some other players over here that we want to be able to put them in coverage and so what we're going to do is we're going to take this deep blue safety right here, King. You can put him in inside third. And then we can take Jackson and put him into a deep half just like this. And then what we could do on the back side of this is we could take Alexander, put him into this uh, little cloud flat zone. We've got this guy into a, a curl flat. And then now what we're doing is we've got this adjustment where, we, again, we've, we've shaded our coverage down. And now we've got, you know, basically this right here, where we've created the same Mabel concept, but we've rolled the coverage. The reason why we would do something like this is specifically for 
someone that's running like a Jets Day uh, type of approach. You see this really takes takes a lot of um, a lot of what people are going to like to do. So you can do all of that if you want to. Um, that's another really good way to play this this offense. But typically what I will do is I'll do, because again, we want to kind of keep it simple from an adjustment perspective. So you see right here, just by shading coverage down, I have these hard flats um, on the field. If I don't do that, then it would look like this right here. Um, whoops, let me, um, let me just like take a sack. If I don't do that, then I'll have these things that are, I have these, um, these seam flat zones. Uh, seam flat zones are really, really good. In my opinion, they're the best purple zone in the game. So you can see if I shift it over like this, right, then I have this kind of coverage. Now, why, you know, what, what determines, you know, why, why would I run this versus that or whatever? Um, another style of coverage that you can run uh, is something like this right here. It's, a, it's, again, it's a continuation of the zone of the roll coverage. But basically, we would do this, where we basically rolled the coverage. As you see, we rolled the coverage to the right, just like this right here. But then what we're going to do on the back side is we're just going to have a seam flat. And what this allows us to do on this right side is it allows us to have this look right here. And then we can basically go ahead and we can man up on the slot or whoever we want to really. And then we still have that three rec hook. So we could, this, this, this basically frees the linebacker up now to be able to be kind of a, you know, a jack of all trades. A lot of the motion snaps and things like that are centered around this slot um, or the tight end crosser. So we could man up the tight end. We could man up the R1 receiver. Um, this right here is another version of that roll coverage setup that will do a pretty good job. And then the big thing that you got to watch out for is something like this right here. So if they run this combination, uh, this is the mesh concept. So if they run this, if you watch the circle receiver, you see that we're in a really good position if we base a line. This is why I base, I prefer, I tend to like to base a line against Bunch at this point in the season just because it really does uh, kind of limit what they can do. Now, if you're in this kind of defense right here that we were talking about where we have, you know, kind of this setup, right? This setup right here. The problem is we can't defend uh, everything they're going to be able to do from this with just this setup. And the reason why is because of that cover three bomb. So if you're playing regs, um, you really have to protect against this cover three bomb. As you can see, though, if I don't have to protect against it, I'm going to be able to defend mesh. I'm going to be able to defend flood. I'm going to be able to defend bunch trail. All of those things I'm going to be able to defend at a high level. So the biggest thing that I've got to do is basically, you know, protect myself from um, that specific cover three bomb. So if I deep half on the outside, though, I just want you to watch how this plays. If they run the play, um, if they run this play right here, mesh, you're going to see this motioned out corner route on the outside doesn't beat a ten yard ten yard purplism. So you can run a deep path or an invert coverage on your bunch side if you want to, and still have uh, a little bit of success. Um, you can see it's very simple to set up, um, but as you can see. What we really like about this is the ability to have an inside third. That's really the key element. So another thing we could do is something like this right here. Um, this is essentially rolling the coverage the opposite direction. But the beauty of this is now there's no chance they're going to be able to work, you know, really any crossing route or post combination or anything like a, a tight end post out of clear out or something. They can't run stuff like that on this. Um, the post routes really get negated when you run a defense like this. You see the coverage really sits in the middle on it very nicely. So anyways, those are a couple of different ways to watch or to run the Mike Blitz 3. The biggest thing you want to watch out for, especially if you're playing regs, is you've got to watch out for this corner route to the circle receiver. The best way to handle that is to base a line and to leave this guy in a um, in like a middle third. The problem is, the problem that it creates is the potential to get cover three bombed. So if you know they're running the Jets playbook, for example, if you know they're running the Jets playbook, then you know the problem receiver is going to be R1. If you know they're running the Seattle playbook, it's a little bit easier because then you can just man this guy up on circle and you really are pretty much good. Like, you don't really have to do anything else. Um, you know, you might have to watch, but you can man up whoever the problem is. So you could do something like this, where you take this lineman right, who's a linebacker that's got decent speed, you put him on a, uh, a seam flat and then you take the linebacker 
and you can hit him up on whoever. So now you can have an outside third out there that'll help with like corner routes and will help just play over the top. And now you just have someone that's protecting for you know something like like the mesh concept or whatever. And you'll find this is makes it really really hard for them to be able to move the ball. But anyways, those are the best ways to run Mike Blitz three um, and really shut down the gun bunch offense. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to get the full defensive guide, you can get that in the description of this video.